All right, what have we gotten into now? We had a citywide yard sale today, and I wasn't really looking for a golf cart, but we came across this Easy Go. I think it's a 94 model. I offered him 450, and he took it. Got a little bit of damage down there. But otherwise, it's all intact. It runs, comes with a charger. But it runs uh, enough to get it on the trailer anyway. It was very weak. It barely pulled itself on the trailer. And the guy tells me that uh, he doesn't know the condition of the batteries. He said the car, the car is set for uh, many years and he would charge it every now and then. But uh, you don't know if they're any good or not. I can tell you there's a lot of, uh, you can see a lot of seepage from these batteries. I'm sure that's normal. Probably don't know if it is or not. And then a lot of these older carts, you'll see the frames rusting out from what the guy was telling me. And you can see some rust on this frame, but I don't think it's anything too major with it right now until as long as I get ahead of it and get that frame cleaned and treated. I'm going to get it unloaded and see how far if it'll just take me down the road and back. I don't think it will. Oh, let's see what your model it is. It's supposed to be a plate here. Um, yeah, 94 looks like. Augusta, Georgia. I'll keep you guys updated as we go through it and get it running and turn it into whatever it's gonna be. All right, a few things I've noticed so far. One is the batteries. Um, got a bad one for sure. Maybe not bad, but maybe it's the connection. You can see there, that post is melted. This battery got really hot. I went in and got one of my infrareds and um, this battery was showing like 150 degrees. The rest of them were around 80. So either bad battery or bad connection or both. I don't even know if this battery can be saved. That post has been melted before. And, you know, I can see some corrosion on these leads, obviously. Several of them. So these batteries need to be pulled out, tested independently. And we'll see if um, any of them can be saved. These Trojan batteries, I looked them up, they're like $220 a piece right now. So, man, that is really expensive something else i noticed the golf cart has a noticeable lean to it you can see that probably sit better up here so it's leaning to the right and if you'll notice this this leaf spring here that spring hanger is all the way out or flat as opposed to this spring hanger that is looks like it's in about the right position so and then there's a clanking noise in forward or reverse and it's coming from this wheel area on the right side and i don't know if you can see it from the video but that wheel is has a, a lean to it it's kind of pointed out this direction so i'm hoping i don't have a bent axle I don't know. I'm going to jack it up and pull that wheel off and see what's going on there. Here's a better shot of that lean. And it is leaning really bad. I think this is where the clanking was coming from. I can, those lug nuts are loose. 
All of them. Wow. That could have been the clanking noise. Well, we know the source of the lean now. And a broken leaf spring. I don't know if that's a result of corrosion. Probably so. Yeah, I would assume so. You can see. And that frame is probably worse than what I thought. Or I was hoping it would be better. I won't know the extent of it till I get those batteries pulled out. I don't know if we can be saved. I might be able to just take some angle iron and reinforce it. I don't know. I don't know the fix for that. I'm sure. I'm sure it's common. Yep, that's the source of the lean for sure. And let's see. I tell you what, that clanking noise may have just been these. These lug nuts loose. I'm hoping that's what it is. I'm hoping that rear end's in good shape. We'll see, the brakes are really bad on it. It barely has brakes, so I don't know if that's an adjustment or I gotta go in here. I don't know yet. <clears throat> so I think I'll put this wheel back on with correct, and we'll tighten the lug nuts and maybe that'll get rid of the clanking. And then, let me try to get that lead off and or to see how tight it is and see if I can get a good connection there. See if I can keep that battery from getting hot. Well, I got the wheel back on, took it around the driveway and back and still very weak, but the clanking noise went away. So that was definitely that wheel that uh, they had the loose lug nuts. So that's good. I think the rear end is good. I think the motor's good, but it's still very weak. So. When I tried to tighten all of these cables, remove some corrosion, this battery that we're gonna call bad, this melted here, terminal melted, that post is spinning. I'm gonna try to tighten it. So obviously this battery is, is no good. We can't, uh, the internals are bad because of the spinning post. So I bypassed it, I haven't tried it yet. So I just kind of orphaned this battery. It's going nowhere now. I just jumped that negative here to the next one. So now we have 30 volts instead of 36. I don't know if that's bad for the motor, probably is. I'm just gonna see if that makes any type of difference. Removing that bad battery. Okay, so I took it around the driveway. Maybe a little improvement. Kind of a uphill going out of the driveway here and it's struggling. I mean, it's really struggling to go uphill. Maybe a little bit better. 30 volts instead of 36. Uh, the good news is this battery's not getting hot anymore because it's not in the in the circuit anymore. So, and I did a temp check on all these batteries. They're all 77.1. So nothing's getting hot anymore. So I don't know if the batteries, they're obviously weak. Or I don't know if I have that six more volts. Would it fix things? If that battery was good and put into the series if it would make a difference but i don't know i've just got to test each battery and see if that makes a difference it's been uh, about a week since i last updated and what i did was i took a one amp charger on the batteries and i unhooked the cables i charged each battery individually at one amps for about two days i've got about three different one amp chargers that, that will do six volt. Um, none of the batteries would actually charge up fully as far as the automatic charger saying it was charged. Two of the batteries are looking pretty good. I'm actually getting uh, almost seven volts, 6.8 and 6.9 out of this one and this one. The rest of them I can only get about 6.3. Uh, fully charged. I'm not sure where that's supposed to land, but anyway, <clears throat> I got a little bit more power out of the cart. I still could not climb that big, that little hill that you see. I mean, I could climb it, but it was very slow. Coming back in the driveway, it kind of goes uphill, as you can see, uh, very slow. 
Uh, but one thing I did is I put the meter, I alligator clipped the meter onto the uh, positive and negative, negative side of the pack. I was getting 37 volts. Um, and then I went for a spin looking at the meter. And when I put the cart under a load, I dropped down to 33 volts when it tries to climb a hill. So the pack's not maintaining 36 volts under a load. So that is definitely um, the batteries. And I was directly off the battery pack. So, you know, it's not the controller or anything like that. Killing my voltage. It's got to be the battery pack. And I date coated these batteries. These batteries are eight years old. So, yeah. I'm going down to get Sam's Club batteries for 600 bucks for a set. They're about $100 a piece. So many people online tell me not to do it but typically those people are dealers and um, they probably don't want me to buy Sam's Club batteries. So I'm gonna go try it. I've read a lot of good reviews on Sam's Club batteries along with the negative ones. So that's where we're at. So you got the batteries, Sam's Club. That pan is, is pretty much rusted out. We're gonna replace this battery tray and the supports for it as well, or the hangers. All right, I got the batteries set in there. I need to get them wired up. I'm gonna use the old cables. I cleaned them up earlier. I think they're good enough just to, just to test the battery. It's just going to be a test, just to make sure that the motor's good, the controller's good. I test that forward reverse switch so if it keeps getting hot and if everything checks out then i'm confident enough in the cart to go ahead and continue the new batteries are just not doing it it won't climb a hill still weak it does fine on a flat surface but new batteries just aren't uh, didn't fix the problem entirely um so i have a new controller here forward reverse switch i mean um, I'm going to replace the forward reverse switch and uh, I got new battery cables because this hodgepodge of cables that was on it, I think I'm losing some amperage there. And then this switch, it's just worn out, I think. So those contacts are causing me to lose some amperage. We'll see. Um, you know, I'll have new batteries now, I'll have new cables. This new controller or forward reverse switch will be new. And then from there, I'll move to the uh, speed controller. And then last thing left is the motor. So we'll get it figured out. All right, a little progress on the cart. Got the forward control switch, the new forward control switch installed. And put all new battery cables. Also, the new... Um, well, I got new cables all the way to the controller. I don't have new cables from the controller to the motor. But I got a lot more power, but I'm still struggling on hills. And then the controller will actually heat up uh, if, I, if it gets under a really good load and it'll slow down and stop. So before I, I dive into that controller, which I think the controller is good, we're gonna deal with this broken spring issue because what I think could be happening with this broken spring, you can see that wheel kind of runs off to the right. When it gets under a load, I think it's trying to pull it out of alignment and it's sucking up a lot of my power. That's a theory anyway. So I'm gonna get the new springs changed out. I got two new brake cables as well, because I don't have any brakes. I got uh, one busted cable and one cable that's so stretched it can't even be adjusted anymore, so. Two new brake cables, I'll adjust the brakes. Hopefully the pads and the drums are good. And uh, get the new springs on there. And then we'll see what happens from there. Got the new leaf springs and shocks in today. Got the new brake, or got the old brake cables off. And I've got those already installed on the front side. Just wait until I get the new leaf springs on to get those on. The brakes look good in here. I pulled the hubs off, looked at them. 
Still got plenty of pad left on both sides. Man, I just found another issue, or an issue taking the springs off. You see that bolt, that spring bolt there? I got the nut off. Then if you look right here, I can't back that bolt out because of that battery tray. There's no way to get it out. It's the same way on the other side. I'll give you a look at the battery cage. Definitely seen better days. But they make an aluminum box here, aluminum cage you can buy for about 80 bucks. It comes with uh, the steel support brackets on the back here that mount into it. And then from what I've seen, they actually, they bolt to the frame in here. They just kind of bolt up here. Um, or you can get a steel fabricated frame battery tray that just is a direct replacement to this one. I don't know what I'm going with yet. You know, this started out as going to be a very easy project. Replace some batteries, have a good golf cart. Man, it has been a chore. I had to remove the body. Get this back seat off. And the top. I had to do all that to get to this, get the battery tray out. I probably could have worked around the body, but it was going to be too difficult. Now I have access to the top of the battery straps or these supports. And then I can get to these torque bolts here because the body was coming over it in a straight line. And I was going to probably tear the body up trying to get those out. So at least now we can give it a good cleaning. That is thick, man. Look at that. It's like a quarter inch, eighth of an inch thick. Dust. Yeah, now, anything else I need to do to it, I need to, need to do to it while I have it torn down. Maybe clean some of that junk out. So I'm going to order a new battery tray and then uh, get that in there. May clean the body up and maybe get some of that dent out. I don't know. Now that I'm this far, I may just tear the front of it off too. I don't know. I didn't mean to come this far. Now I gotta get the Cherokee going as well. It's it needs new brake lines. But now I've got this thing in front of it. Gotta get it done first. Got a trailer in the backyard I'm restoring. Uh, I got the new springs here, the heavy duty springs. They came with uh, U-bolts, some new bushings. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that. Well guys, I never went to, meant to go this far, but I just pulled the floorboard off of it. I'm getting ready to go all the way to the frame with it. And just to go ahead and address every issue on it. I mean, I've come this far. Didn't plan to come this far with it, but that's how it goes. I'm gonna pull that motor off and send it to a company called Plum Quick. They're going to rebuild it, give it about 20% more torque and a little bit more speed. I think that's better than buying a new motor. I don't know if the motor's bad or not. I mean, it, the card is very weak. And uh, so we know that the prior owner put a new solenoid and controller on it. That didn't address the issue. I put a forward control switch on it. That helped, but it was still very weak. But we also had that spring issue. The spring was busted and it was kind of throwing this drive wheel out of alignment. So it was sucking up a lot of power. So I wanted to, to get that done, put the new springs on it and then test it to see if that was my issue, meaning the spring. 
robbing power, but uh, then I had to go ahead and tear off the back body panel, get the back battery rack, or get the battery rack out just to get to the leaf springs to get those bolts out. And then, so I've come this far, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and address, address every issue. So we'll get the motor rebuilt and we'll get a new battery rack in there. If it's the controller, we'll address that later. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this front body panel, um, all the front end. And that way uh, it'll be easier to address the steering issues because that's another issue. Look at the play I've got in that. The wheels aren't even moving. So we've got to address that. Even running like eight to 10 miles an hour with it, it was squirrely all over the road. All the wiring will be replaced now. All right, I got the front cowling off. And if you're doing this, um, this is a metalist. If you're doing it on this model, you can see the rivets here that I had to drill out. Let's get those out all the way around. And then there are two plastic bolts here. And here you can get those out through the top of the dash inside. And then there's three bolts here. You have to remove the front bumper system and you'll come up from underneath to get those out. So the bolts here on top and then the rivets and then it just, the whole thing just pops up. Not too bad. A lot of people say it's pretty tough on the TXT models, but wasn't tough on this other than driven, drilling the rivets out. But And I think tomorrow I'll pull that motor off and get it sent in. And let's see, I've got to send the shocks back. They were too small, so I've already got a return authorization on those. So I'm gonna send those shocks back and then, you know, speaking of shocks, you would have to take this whole front cowling off to get to the shocks anyway. So definitely gonna do that while I've got all that apart. And then my suspension is, or the steering is just completely trashed. Um, everything is loose. This, this right here, where this steering arm comes up, this whole thing has got probably a quarter inch movement in it. So that whole bushing's gone, which is causing a lot of the play. I'm gonna go ahead and replace everything else. That's where we're at. All right, this will be the last update before I post this video. Video is getting kind of long, so I'll go ahead and post this as video number one, and then video number two will be coming shortly as I do more work on it. So please subscribe if you want to keep up with this rebuild. I think the only thing to update you on since the last video is this motor that I pulled off. I went ahead and sent it uh, to Plum Quick. Got it boxed up and sent to them. They received it and they let me know that the motor was was in good shape. It was actually a GE aftermarket motor. They said it had nice heavy brushes on it and everything looked good. It was a good candidate for the rebuild, so or the upgrade rather. And then if I get time, I'm going to pull that diff cover off um and make sure everything's good in there and then refill that we need to get everything power washed a lot of dust let's see um i need to get new shocks for it or a different set of shocks i'm actually going to get some some longer shocks because i've got a lift kit identified for it that I'm probably going to go ahead and order. Why not go ahead and lift it? So I got everything torn apart and so we can go ahead and get the lift kit installed. I'm not going to upgrade the wheels and tires right now. We'll just run with stock. I got pretty much a new set that came off of a Yamaha. 
it was a takeoff set got really good tread so I got four matching pair from my local dealer but I'll put them on there and then later on we'll probably end up going with bigger wheels and tires especially if I go ahead and put the lift kit on it which I'm about 95% sure I will thanks for watching and look out for video number two coming soon